everybody. I appreciate it. And uh, thanks to the Timoquan Foundation, Felicia and, and Maida for inviting me. Uh, it's it's going to be fun. We're going to we're going to uh, take a tour of some of the parks in the Timucuan Preserve, some of my favorite places to photograph. Uh, Felicia, am I ready just to start now? Or yeah, yeah, you're ready to go. Okay, all right, good, good. So uh, anyway, the uh, we've we've seen this map before, and it, it it's to me it's unbelievable how many natural areas we have within the, the city limits of, of Jacksonville and surrounding areas that uh, in 20 minutes, I can be at Big Talbot Island from where I live on the south side. So it's, it's always comforting to me. If, if I can't be out there, I can at least think about it, you know? <laughs> so uh, now the, the first area we're going to uh, go to this morning is Big Talbot. Uh, State Park, one of my all-time favorite places to photograph. I've been photographing it for, for ever since I came here, really. So uh, th this image here, uh, and if you have questions uh, about anything, just type them in and uh, Mida will uh, tell me uh, and, and we'll, we'll talk about it either now or, or at the end. So uh, go ahead and, and type your questions in. This is uh, Big Talbot at moonrise, it's, I found that Big Talbot Island is, is a morning place for me. I get, I get my best images in the morning. So this particular morning, I got the moonrise, uh, you can see rising above the, the tree there. And a little bit later, I got the sunrise in the same location. So uh, uh, it, was a, it was a good morning, good morning for, uh, for photos. This is an older image that I, I did probably 17 years ago or so. Uh, and I've, I've tried to recreate this, this particular photo in a, in a slightly different format for years and have never been able to duplicate it. So that's the thing about Florida, uh, your, your landscape changes from, from week to week, much less year to year. So uh, storms and, and uh, tides just kind of move everything around. Uh, this tree uh, is, it, it finally fell during, I think, one of the hurricanes, Hurricane uh, Matthew, I believe. Uh, but th this was uh, one of my go-to places to go uh, before the tree fell. But uh, it's a real, really neat, neat tree. Uh, and there's more to photograph at Big Talbot than just dead trees. There's, uh, there's Black Rock Beach here, and uh, that, that can sometimes make an interesting shot. And, and the island, it's a pretty big island, so, so if, you, if you do some exploring, uh, you, can, you can find some, some pretty cool things to photograph. Uh, this is just right off the beach. Hey, well. Uh, Yes, ma'am. Um, a quick question. Someone asked, how did you get the foreground and background in focus? <laughs> uh, small f-stop. F11, f16. Uh, so, and uh, usually I focus about a third of the way in to the image. Uh, here recently, I've been doing some focus stacking, which involves taking pictures uh, at different, with the focus at different spots in the image. And uh, you can stack those images together in Photoshop and get, uh, get something that's sharp from very close to the lens to, to very far from the lens. And if you, if you just do a Google search for focus stacking or, or focus in photography, you can find all kinds of tutorials on, on uh, websites. That's how I learned <laughs> a lot of the techniques that I use for the nature photography is uh, just poking around on the internet. But this image here was shot in the, uh, uh, the parking lot uh, of the uh, Big Talbot Island where the picnic tables are and the, and the picnic areas. And I've been looking at this little pot of trees for many years and, and finally uh, a couple of years ago I was able to, to make a, a 
a decent picture out of it. Uh, and th this area here is an area that, that I just stumbled on when I was actually lost, <laughs> trying to get back to the trail uh, because the, the tide came in and cut me off from walking down the beach. So, so I just hit the woods and, uh, and ended up just kind of lost for a little bit. But, you know, I could probably never get back to this spot, but it was a beautiful place. Now, this is the back side of Big Talbot. This is over on the uh, eastern or western side of Big Talbot uh, at uh, Sawpit Creek. And this little area I, I just found when I was uh, trying to find a place to photograph this particular thunderhead. And you can see the boat ramp over there to the right. So uh, decided to leave leave that in. That That's a little... Uh, touch of humanity there. Uh, and this, this image here, uh, I think it makes a good Halloween image. I, I posted it during Halloween a couple of times. Uh, so it looks, looks kind of fearsome, like a, like a big monster cloud. And then we got the wildlife, you know, we got, <laughs> we got snails and, and barnacles too. And, uh, and these snails move, uh, not very fast, but they move. So uh, it's, you know, they're, they're there sometimes from time to time. And then you've got uh, the remnants of, of uh, animals. You see the little bird tracks here through the sand, a uh, little sand dune on the northern end of the island. And sometimes you can find a comet there. This is uh, Comet Neowise that, that uh, photographed last year. So, uh, so now uh, we're going to go to Little Talbot Island, which is adjacent to Big Talbot. And it's another one of my go-to spots. Uh, sometimes you'll go in the, in the morning and you'll find tide pools. This morning, a uh, particular morning, was a, was a great morning for, for a tide pool. And it, it's fascinating how the tide comes in and just carves these, these patterns in the sand and it's it's just washes away all the footprints and you you start over again every morning there's a lot of trails great hiking trails at little talbot go through the dunes this is another uh another image that same morning of the tide pools Well, I've got another question. Um, yes. Do you, you use Photoshop for most of your photos? I use Photoshop in addition to, to many other programs. I, I've got uh, several programs that I use depending on what I'm trying to accomplish with an image. Uh, so yeah, but Photoshop is kind of my, my go-to. I kind of start with Camera Raw, which is part of Photoshop, work the image up, and then... Uh, use either an HDR program or I, I layer the images in uh, Photoshop to get the tonality the way I want to. That, that's why uh, the, the highlights in the images are, are still have detail and also the shadows have, have a lot of detail too. It's more like your eye sees it when you layer images together like this because uh, photography is limited into, into how much tones you can capture in one image. So uh, if, uh, if I need to, I'll, I'll layer images. Now that uh, requires putting the camera on a tripod so everything is stable and, uh, and no wind helps too. If it's windy, it complicates things because things move around. This is a little beautiful little flower uh, called a spider wart, kind of a an unfortunate name for a, for a pretty little flower here. It's a foggy morning, uh, one of the dunes here with a little trail. Now this this guy here, guy, I call it a guy, it's, it's, they say it's a female snowy owl. Probably one of the most photographed visitors ever to come, come to Little Talbot Island. This was four or five years ago. And uh, I found out about it at the Times Union and went out and, uh, and found, found the owl. 
And so for two weeks there, every day off that I had, I would go back to Little Talbot and try to photograph, get more photos of the owl. And she, she hung around for, for probably two weeks. And so my routine during those days off was to, uh, was to go, oh, and she sat a lot. She sat all day until sunset and then she would fly off. So, you know, the photographers there would wait for five or six hours sometimes waiting for her to fly. Uh, I like to get pictures of birds in flight because that's kind of what they do, you know. So, <laughs> uh, so in flight pictures are good. But I, I would call the ranger station and ask where the owl is. And they say, okay, go, go park in lot five and go to the beach, walk down the beach. And so I, I quickly figured out that if I walked down the beach and saw this, I'd found the owl. So a uh, lot, lot, lot of folks there that, uh, that had the, the same plans that I did with the owl. Uh, and this guy here was, uh, was pretty creative. He, he made his daughter a tripod <laughs> and uh, just put his camera in the binoculars there to, to photograph the owl. I mean, that's why we have kids, right? <laughs> All right, so Cedar Point, another, another one of my go-to places. Cedar Point is another morning place for me. Uh, now, I have gotten some some good images in the afternoon but it usually need to get there before the sun comes up uh, but the the trees here are just amazing just, just fantastic uh, trees and, and there's uh, what I like about it is it's not overgrown it, it's kind of you know there's some space there that you can work with and you've got the cedar trees there too that are uh, that are there. And I think uh, some of the last storms damaged the the trees. Uh, I believe the tree on the right is still there, but uh, it's it's kind of damaged a bit. But there's lots of uh, hiking trails around uh, Cedar Cedar Point also. Here's okay, a no. Got another question for you. Yes. Uh, this is, do you find a lot of wildlife in the parks? Sometimes, sometimes. That, that's a good question. I mean, really, to be honest with you, the most encounters I have with wildlife are mosquitoes, ticks, and red bugs. Uh, <laughs> so make sure you, you take plenty of bug spray with you when, when you go. But certain parts are better for especially birds uh, than, than, than other parks. Uh, Cedar Point, you'll, you'll find a bird every now and then, but it's, I don't really go there for the birds. Uh, we'll, we'll have uh, some pictures coming up in a few minutes of, of probably the best bird place that I've found here. But for Cedar Point, it's the trails and, and the, uh, the creek. Those areas are what I'm, and th this place here too, this is the old, uh, I think it's the Fitzpatrick uh, plantation. Uh, and this is all that's left of it now. But it's still pretty cool when you, when you find this place. Okay, Theodore Roosevelt area. This is, uh, this is the park that Willie Brown uh, left and gave to the city of Jacksonville uh, when he died. With, with the promise that it would be named the Theodore Roosevelt uh, Park. So this is the Willie Brown Trail. This is a shell midden that's probably 30 or 40 feet high that looks out over the, the St. John's River. And uh, if you don't know what a shell midden is, it's basically 5,000 years worth of Timucuan Indians eating oysters and throwing them on the pile. Uh, so, and this pile, this is a pretty big pile. It's about 40 feet high, I guess. And uh, of course now uh, trees have grown on it and it's wilderness now, but it started out as just a pile of oysters. And well, here's, here's a bird. <laughs> uh, 
It's uh, great blue heron that that I just found. This is uh, if you if you've seen the book Special Places. Uh, it's a book uh, I did in collaboration with the Timquam Foundation. Uh, it's uh, on the cover of the book. Now this image here was taken on the uh, the tower that's at, at kind of the bottom of the trail there that overlooks the St. John's River. And I'm showing this picture not because it's a good image, but to show you why I keep going back to places. I mean, the grass is dead, it's cloudy, it's the light's bad, uh, you know, so, so you get what you get in nature photography. So, but you go back, you go back and you find something better, you know, when the grass is green. <coughs> Uh, this area here, uh, I had about maybe five minutes worth of, of sunshine to work with, and then it, then it clouded up again. Uh, so a few years later, I go back and I get this. Uh, so it, it pays off a lot of times to keep going back. Uh, when, when I saw this, this, uh, these clouds, they were kind of marching down the river and getting closer and closer to me. Uh, I, I said the universal photographer's prayer, which is, uh, please, Lord, don't let me screw this up. So, uh, and I say that a lot when I'm out photographing the parks. Hannah Park, another great park. A uh, lot of stuff to do at Hannah. And the beach here is just really interesting. Uh, now, this was before Irma. So I don't know how much of the dunes Irma got, but but I think there's probably uh, some dunes left. Uh, I was with Mark Middlebrook when uh, uh, on this particular morning. He got me into the park early. Thanks, Mark. Uh, and we saw some dolphins, uh, which is always good. And other uh, humans fishing too. With the shrimp boat and uh, turtle tracks. It's a great place to uh, for for turtles to come lay their eggs. And some really cool canopied roads. Uh, a lot of people surf there too. So Seton Creek is, is another another place that's relatively new for uh, for the Timaquan and uh, this little creek here is uh, it, it's just west of I-95 really but it's this vast area of, of marsh and swamp. This is Joel's Landing uh, area of the park. And Huguenot Park uh, is kind of my go-to place uh, to photograph birds uh, certain times of the year. This is a good time of year to find uh, especially laughing gulls and uh, royal terns who are nesting there on the island. You can drive on the beach there, but you got to be careful to stay out of the roped off areas where the birds are nesting. But uh, this time of year, the birds are really, really busy trying to catch uh, little fish to feed their, their babies. And uh, there's a lot, lot of activity there, a lot of noise. You'll find out real quick why they call them laughing gulls. It is loud. But a fun place to just look around. Uh, Alamakani is is cool too. Uh, mostly people fish there, uh, but this is the view of uh, the Fort George River. Uh, beautiful, beautiful place. And I, I threw this picture in as a black and white. Uh, usually most of my images are taken uh, early in the day or late in the day. This picture happened to be in the middle of the day. And, and it looks good in color, but it looks a lot better, I think, in black and white. So if you, if you have a picture that, that may have been not taken at quite the right time of day and it's a little flat looking, try converting it into black and white and see, uh, 
see see what it looks like. You can certain programs you can use uh, Photoshop or or other programs you can uh, change the tonality to to make it uh, make it better. And I, I think these birds were shot at, uh, th these could have been shot at the Joe Carlucci boat ramp. I don't know. So these, these may not be part of the Timucuan. <laughs> but uh, they, they were posing for me. So of course I had to photograph them. Tiger Point uh, is a go-to place. It's now part of the Seven Creeks Recreation Area. Uh, and it's, it's a lot of new amenities there. This is not really a nature photo, but I thought it was cool. The, uh, the uh, sky trails from, from the plains. This is after things started opening up uh, from COVID. And this is another image that I shot in the middle of the day that, uh, that came out pretty well. You can get away with middle of the day in the winter because the sun is, is usually at a pretty low angle. Uh, throughout the day. So that's it. That's, uh, that's the show. Any questions? Maida, you have any, anybody in the chat? Oh, I've, got, I've got a bunch of um, comments that are, quote, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> beautiful images. It's beautiful. <laughs> We, we need to get out there more. I, I'm recently retired from the Times Union, uh, and I hope to spend a lot more time in these parks because there's no better place to be. This, to me, this is the crowning jewel of Jacksonville, is the Timucuan Park System. Uh, just, we're so, we're so blessed to, to be living in an area that has th these kind of areas that, that is open to all. All right, uh, we've got a few oh. questions, so. Um, well, actually, wait a minute. Will, Will, can you stop sharing your screen for a minute? I sure can. I, I, well, I think I can. Let me let me see. There you go. Uh, <laughs> you go to, uh, we're still viewing. Yeah, there you go. Stop it. That's it. Got it. Got it. Um, because one of the questions, I'm going to jump in here, Mina. One of the questions was, um, can we purchase your photos? Um, I'll let Will talk to that. Oh, um, yeah. Yes, you can. Uh, uh, glad you asked that. I forgot to mention my website uh, is willdickey.com, D-I-C-K-E-Y. Uh, so willdickey.com, there's uh, a lot more images of the Timucuan, a lot of other areas in this area and beyond. Uh, so yeah, you might you might enjoy poking around. And if you, when you go to the Timucuan uh, section of my website, I put uh, I post where I shot each picture. So if you see a picture that you really like the location, go see it yourself. Go Google Google that location. You can get maps to go to it and, and go, go see it yourself. Uh, but realize that to, to see it like I photographed it, you may have to get there before the sun comes up. So <laughs> one of the drawbacks. So yeah, a couple things. One is if you want to go to one of the those parks, you can go to our website, timaquanparks.org, and um, you can go to your parks and and get some information, get a trail map. There you um, go. If, you, if you're interested in purchasing one of our special places photo books, which have um, just it's a compilation of a lot of Will's pictures. Um, you can go to our website and you go to get involved. Let's see here. Go to get involved and go to special places book, um, and you can purchase. Um, uh, yeah, so it's you know it has some of these photos in there. If you want the wall size one though, you need to you need to contact Will. <laughs> um, you can also go to our website to find out which parks are open and when. Um, and if there's a fee, again, the only parks that have fees are the state parks, and those are five dollars. And Huguenot and Hannah are both five. The others are um, are free. The national parks are open Wednesday through Sunday. Um, somebody asked about getting in early, and I'm going to let someone else answer that question, Maida. Um, most of the parks are open sunrise to sunset. 
um, so you can get there pretty early. And a lot of them are, are open where there's not really a gate. Um, but if there's a gate and it's closed, I wouldn't cross it if I were you. <laughs> but for the most part, yeah, you can get there pretty early and, and late. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, like I said, the national, the national parks have, um, you know, they, they actually have gates, but um, things like Spanish Pond at Theodore Roosevelt, I, that doesn't really have a gate. And, uh, and the, a lot of the preservation parks do not have any gates. And if you ever uh, wonder specifically, you can either call or email us because we'll tell you. I mean, we, we know, we can tell you right now out of our brains, oh yeah, Spanish Mark, you know, Spanish Pond, Seton Creek, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. A couple other questions here were, um, uh, the best time of the year to photograph the parks, uh, Will? Someone said summer due to the heat was probably really obviously harsh. Well, if, uh, I mean, I, I don't let summer stop me from, from going to the parks. I just try to go very early or very late and take a lot of bug spray. Uh, so, and that, that's how, and you still got to check you know, <laughs> check your legs and all uh, when you get back home to, for, for crawling bugs. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's like not a big deal. You know, you itch a little while and then it's over, but uh, but you get to, to see a gorgeous area. And uh, you know, the, like right now is starting to be a great time to get out in the parks because everything's starting to green up You've got the, these beautiful uh, spring tones, the the light greens and the and the golds. And uh, now I don't know if the marsh grass is greened up yet, uh, but uh, that that's I like to wait for the marsh grass. Sometimes uh, shots of the marsh are better, maybe in the fall because it's had all summer to green up and get real pretty. Uh, so, uh, but, and like right now is a good time for, uh, Huguenot Park for the birds because the, the birds are, are mating and, uh, and, and having their little babies and, and their little babies are growing up. So, uh, it's a good time to, to get out and, uh, and, and check them out, see what you can find. Okay. Another question was, uh, someone, um, says, uh, are you just retired and freelancing? Well, yes, I'm retired from the Times Union, but uh, it's gonna be a while before I put a camera down. <laughs> uh, and freelancing, uh, yes, uh, you know, if something comes up, I, I photograph it. But uh, for the most part, I am doing the uh, nature photography and, and uh, trying to, uh, just look for new places. I mean, I've, I've been photographing the Timucuan Reserve for probably 35 years, uh, but there's still places I need to go check out. So it's, you know, it, it can take a while. Okay, uh, question from Jim is, he worries about taking his camera equipment out on the water like kayaking. What equipment do you use for these outdoor shots? Well, uh, kayaks scare me too. <laughs> I've, I've only uh, been out one time with my gear in a kayak and I was a nervous wreck the whole time. <laughs> kayaks are not really made uh, for photography unless you can find some sort of a waterproof camera or, or put mm -hmm. a, uh, you know, water, waterproof uh, housing over your camera. You know, you could try that. Uh, now, when I'm out on the water, I have a little bass boat, and uh, that that's how I, I get out on the water, and I feel real comfortable with the cameras there because it's very stable, it's it's off the water, and, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's a nice stable platform, but kayaks, I know people do it, but I'm not one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I just talked to Betsy Schifanella the other day, and she yeah. and Tom had been do, had been um, uh, photographing the springs, and they take their cameras out on a paddleboard. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, see that I I can't. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> 
is it is he using more than just his uh, cell phone camera or i think so but she said he had some housing and yeah yeah if you've got a housing then then you got no worries uh so uh i i haven't i haven't tried that yet that that may be uh may be one of the things that i need to try now now i do have rain gear for when it rains uh so uh but i don't know if i if i dunk a camera it's uh i don't know <laughs> that's going to be a big loss if that yeah. happens <laughs> It is. Uh, next question I have is from Les. He says, do you ever use a point and shoot or just your phone camera? Uh, well, if I'm in a situation where I don't have my real camera with me or if if it's just not worth, you know, getting the real camera out, I use my cell phone. You know, it's, it's the quality is pretty amazing. And, uh, and I've never made any big prints with it, but... Uh, but I, I don't see why you couldn't. Okay. Um, next I got from Professor Ginger. What is your criteria for editing? When is an image done? Yeah, well, that, that's a good question. Uh, I'm, I still uh, pull up older images that now I look at them and, and they need a little tweaking. <laughs> so the editing process is uh, just keeps going. Uh, but but my workflow uh, for editing pictures is uh, photograph in, in raw mode uh, for photographers out there that know what that means. Uh, and I edit in camera raw first, do my initial edit in camera raw, then I move the image or images into other programs. Uh, and and I'll layer a lot of a lot of my images are layered. They're 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 more than one image layered together to create uh, detail everywhere in the picture, tonality everywhere. Because like I was saying earlier, uh, one one image can't capture a huge range of tones that you get a lot of times in nature. So you you have to shoot three or four or five pictures from very dark to very light and layer those images together to get that detail. So. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, the rest of the comments are people that love your large print of Round Marsh. That's Pete. Um, thank you. Some, someone said thank you for your presentation. Um, if anyone wants to ask more questions, feel free to unmute and ask. Uh, go ahead, we have a little bit of time. Sure. Um, can I ask about following up with the editing? Are you trying to recreate what you see more by because our eye can see better than the camera or more what you felt? A little of both. Uh, a little, little of both, Ginger. It's, uh, you know, I'm kind of a realist when, when, when I'm uh, out photographing, uh, but I'm also trying to convey the mood of, of the image and the way I remember it. And, and a lot of times the way we remember an image may not be quite 100% accurate, but it's the feeling that you get. And I want to look at an image and, and have it bring back the same memories that, that I have of, of, that, of that particular place at that time. So... It's a little of both with me. It's a little bit of artistic license, I think. But, uh, but I mean, you'll find that almost all of my work, it's, it's real stuff. And, and I try to make it look real. You know, I, I try not to get too fancy. I get out of my wheelhouse if I do that. So. Okay, thanks. That was a great answer. <laughs> thanks. Anybody else? Mm. So Maida is recording this particular presentation. So I know there were some of the pictures that you showed, Will, that it was like, ooh, ooh, I want to sit and look at this one a little bit longer. So we'll have this on our website and you can go back and, and you know, uh, go back, rewind to the your favorite photo and put it on your screensaver. <laughs> and, um, just or you can go to willdickey.com and, and look, look at the, the pictures don't move on my website. So... <laughs> Uh, they, they'll be there. And, and, I, then, and I add new images all the time to my website. So hopefully I'll be adding a lot more images in the near future when I get back out there. 
Will, I've got a question and it's, um, are you uh, looking forward to, are you gonna be going out? I know sometimes you go to Georgia and different places to do more photography. Are you gonna expand out of Timaquan Preserve and out of Florida more? Well, I, I hope so. You know, it uh, just depends on, uh, on the circumstances. I mean, I, I've, I've got a long list of places that I wanna photograph. So, but the thing is, we're, we're so fortunate here is that if you can't afford to go out to out west or, <laughs> or to Canada or whatever, gosh, we got so many places around here that, that are just world-class locations to, to take pictures. And, uh, you know, it, it's just, we're, we're very fortunate to be in this location, I think. That's a great answer. I'm going to quote you on that. <laughs> um, uh, another comment, um, Pete says, uh, wouldn't it violate a copyright to download the pics for a screensaver, like off your website? Um, do, do you mean, I mean, people can purchase those images, right? Yeah, they can, but I, you know, it might, but uh, <laughs> you know, if you, if you're using it for a screensaver, you know, oh. just don't, just don't tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right. Well, thanks to everyone for coming today. And um, like I said, visit Will's website, visit timaquamparks.org, visit AARP. We'll keep you informed. I think our next um, Healthy Living will be uh, probably Ranger Ted Johnson with the National Park Service, Timaquam Ecological Historic Preserve, uh, will be telling us about American Beach. Uh, which is the historic African-American beach up there on Amelia Island. Um, again, another place that you can go anytime, but he, there's a kind of a rich history there and he'll be telling us about that. One, one quick thing, Felicia, uh, my contact information is on my website. So if you have any more questions or just, you know, you, you want to chat about something, just shoot me an email or call me or, or whatever. I'm retired now, so you know I've got time. So, so give me a shout. And if you have a particularly scenic area that you think you need to show, Will, I'm oh, sure. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm always up for new places. So if you've got a place, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> uh, real quick, there was this one final question. Someone says, "Do you ever use a drone?" No, but it's definitely on my list of uh, of things that I want to do. I uh, I do want to get a drone and uh, and give it a whirl, and because uh, I, I think a drone. I mean, Tom Schiffinell has got this drone thing figured out. I mean, he's he's getting some amazing images from his drone, and uh, I just haven't haven't done it yet, but I'm I'm going to. That's great. Um, speaking of that, that reminds me, um, we have. In 2019, we had the 20th anniversary um, exhibition uh, featuring uh, artwork and from Kathy Stark, photography from Will Dickey, and uh, photography also from Tom Schifanella. And that ex exhibition is at the Fernandina Beach Library right now. Um, it's going to be packed up at the end of this month, and we're moving it. It's going to the Beaches Museum in Jacksonville Beach. Um, so that's an another great way um, you can connect with um, Will's photography and uh, the parks uh, in an artistic way. And uh, we're also coming up with engagement activities, probably a range of like virtual and hybrid and maybe a small in-person things where they're being uh, planned right now. So that's coming up as well. Um, and that's a great way to connect and you can, uh, you know, be up close and personal with the, um, with the artwork and photography. So Check our websites and our social media channels because we'll be putting that out as soon as all the plans are made for that. All right. Anyone else? I think that's it. Thank you all. Thanks for coming. Thank you. And you are welcome to, Will, you're, I'm going to have you stay on just a little bit longer in case somebody had a, you know, sure. another question or a, Yeah, I see a lot of, of uh, a lot of old friends have tuned in, so uh, thank you, thank you for that. Give me a call. Thanks, and we'll see y'all next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye.